All right, good evening. We're so glad to welcome you tonight to our Christmas program. How many of you have been to at least one Christmas program already this season? A recital maybe or a church program? How many of you have at least one more to go to after tonight even? All right, there's going to be a lot of them, and it's a wonderful time of year to celebrate uh, the gift of music and the season in which we can sing about the Lord Jesus Christ. This is our program, this, The Story of Christmas, and we're so glad to welcome you here with us this evening. We have a presentation for you tonight that I think will bless your hearts, that will encourage you about what your uh, sons and daughters are learning at our school uh, musically with fine arts program and all the wonderful things that they get to be part of here at our school. Our uh, young ladies and gentlemen are wearing their new concert outfits this evening that you folks helped provide for, so let's give them a round of applause for looking good tonight. Well done, well done. So that included new ties and vests for the guys and then uh, new concert dresses for the young ladies. And so there's more on the way, but we're debuting those outfits tonight. So thank you so much for helping provide for those outfits this year. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll ask for the Lord's, the Lord's blessing on the program. We'll get started tonight. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of Christmas. Thank you for the season that we can celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And we're thankful that uh, you sent Christ to save us and that we can sing about that tonight here uh, together as, as believers in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you for each of these families, for these young people. We're thank you, thankful for the work that's gone into the production tonight. May everything that's said and done honor and glorify you. We ask these things tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We hope you enjoy the program.
So why not? Then tell me a story that's not fake. No fluff. I want more than singing. I want more than pretty lights. I guess I came here out of duty tonight. Tradition. I came here tonight because that's, that's how it's always been. I came here tonight because, well, I'm trying to fit in into what I think must matter because so many of us are here. I could be somewhere else, but for some reason, I'm not. I've put all the other stuff on the shelf at the moment for reasons I can't quite explain myself. Yeah, presents need wrapping. Cookies need baking. Children entertaining. Relatives need greetings and feedings. And their own dreams of this holiday to come true. All of that to be done. And I'm here. Just, Just like you. you. In my close quarter seat. Maybe competing for parking. And our place in the pews. If I'm honest, I'll face the real reason I came. There's a longing. And an ache. A hole in my heart I can't make. There's a longing. It lives in my soul like a flickering, faltering flame just waiting for someone to fan it. I need to claim this holiday for more than rappy paper, glitzy glamour, and a clamor down Candy Cane Lane. Because Christmas has become what I get tomorrow under the tree. And what I get tomorrow is stuff, stuff, pretty fluff, and the horrible feeling that... I still don't have enough. Because on that morning, my trappings and hopes are scattered and open at my feet. And, and I, I still, still feel, feel incomplete. incomplete. The spirit of Christmas morning is too quickly the spirit of Christmas past. How fast it flees. And in here, there's still a void. There's a vacancy that Bethlehem lacked. And I want Christmas back from where the world has dug its grave. Because I've heard Jesus saves. I long for Christmas. Maybe for what it used to be. Or, or what, what it really is. is. So tell me. Tell me the story of the baby and the manger. After all, what's the danger? It's just a pretty little story. Angels. Shepherds. Magi. 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 Sheep. Not much to deck the halls with. Not much there that will keep until tomorrow. <laughs> because it's just a pretty little story. A pretty little story. A pretty little story. A pretty little story that tomorrow doesn't does it matter? matter. Or it's exactly what I'm after. Either way, I have ears to hear. So <laughs> tell me the story. I'll, I'll be, be right here. here. So what do you say, little flame? Because we're walking out those doors on a cold winter night. There are winds of the world that we must fight to make sure that your light stays bright. What do you, you say, say, little, little flame? flame? Even when Christmas is over, the story hasn't ended. For many years, we've pretended that we could just wrap Christmas up. And then kick it out on the curb when the needle started the fall. And the new year calls for new commitments that put our hopes, our dreams, and our joy, and the truth, months away. Christmas, you're more than a story. Maybe, Maybe this year, you'll, you'll stay. stay.
of winter time gives a wonderful illustration of the beauty and diversity God has created. The first Canadian carol written by missionary Jean de Brebeuf was originally set in the Huron Indian language and used images of their culture to tell of Christ's birth. God is known as the mighty Geche Manitou and the infant Jesus is laid within a lodge of broken bark wrapped in a ragged robe of rabbit skin and through these words set to the tune, Jesus and Antonio, the gospel was extended to the people group that would have otherwise rejected this unknown babe in a manger. The end of each phrase declares, Jesus, your king, is born. A king, a savior, born for every tribe, ton, and nation. mountaintop three trees stood and dreamed of what they wanted to become when they grew up the first little tree looked up at the stars and said i want to hold treasure i want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones i'll be the most beautiful treasure chest in the world the second tree looked out at the small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean i want to be a powerful ship for mighty kings i'll be the strongest ship in the world the third tree looked down at the valley below, where busy men and women worked in a busy town. I don't want to leave the mountaintop at all. I want to grow so tall that when people stop to look at me, they'll raise their eyes toward heaven and think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. Years passed. The rain came, the sun shone, and the little trees grew tall. One day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. The first woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, This tree is beautiful. It is perfect for me. With, With a swoop of his shining axe, the, the first tree fell. Now I shall be made into a beautiful treasure chest. I shall hold many riches. 
The second woodcutter looked to the second tree and said, It is strong. It is perfect for me. With, With a swoop of her shining axe, the, the second, second tree fell. Now I shall be a mighty ship for mighty kings. The third tree felt his heart sink. As the last woodcutter looked his way, he stood straight and tall and, t and pointed bravely to heaven. But the last woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me. With, With a swoop of her shiny axe, the third tree fell. The first woodcutter was a carpenter who fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold, nor with treasure. Instead, she was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. The second tree smiled as the woodcutter took him to a shipyard. But no mighty sailing ship was made that day. Instead, the once strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat. He was too small and too weak to sail on an ocean or even a river. Instead, he was taken to a small lake. The third tree was confused when he was cut into strong beams and left in a lumber yard. What happened? The once tall tree wondered. All I wanted was to stay on the mountaintop and point to God. Many, many days and nights passed. The three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I, I wish I could make a cradle for him. him. Her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth and the sturdy wood. This manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly, the first tree knew she was holding the greatest treasure in the world. One evening, a tired traveler and his friends crowded into the old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed out into the lake. Soon, a thundering, thrashing storm arose. The little tree shuddered. He knew he did not have the strength to carry so many passengers safely through with the wind and the rain. The tired man awakened, stretched out his hand, and said, Peace. The storm stopped as quickly as it had begun. The second tree then knew he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. One Friday morning, the third tree were startled when his beams were yanked from the forgotten woodpile. He flinched as he was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. He sh shuddered as soldiers nailed a man's hands to him. He felt ugly and harsh and cruel. But on the third day, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath him, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the third tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they, they would think of salvation. salvation. That was better than being the tallest tree in the world.
Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. And it came to pass in those days there went a decree. Behold, thy king cometh. And Joseph went up from Galilee. Behold, thy king cometh. To, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife. Behold, thy king cometh. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. Behold, thy king cometh. And in the same country, the shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And, and the angel said unto them, Fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Behold, thy King cometh. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And on earth peace. Goodwill toward men. Behold, thy King cometh. This is the month, and this the happy morn. Wherein the Son of Heaven's eternal King, of wedded maid and virgin mother born, our great redemption from above did bring. For so the holy sages once did sing, that he our deadly forfeit should release, and with his Father, workers of perpetual peace. The stars, with deep amaze, stand fixed in steadfast gaze, bending one way their precious influence, and will not take flight, for all the morning light. Yes, yes truth and justice then shall down return to men. The enameled auras of the rainbow wearing, in mercy set between, throned in celestial sheen, let with radiant feet, like tissued clouds down steering, and heaven, as at some festival, will open wide the gates of her high palace hall. But wisest fate says no, this must not yet be so. The babe lies yet in smiling infancy, that on the bitter cross must redeem our loss. So both himself and us to glory, behold, thy king cometh.
I trust you've enjoyed what you've heard so far this evening. We're going to transition here for our last few numbers of the evening. And as we do so, I just want to say thank you, first of all, to Pastor Loggins and to Pastor Kay, the other staff here at Calvary and Calvary Baptist Christian School who have opened up this, this facility for us tonight. And we appreciate so much their hard work. Anytime you do anything at a school, uh, it's one thing to adjust schedules, but when you involve two schools, uh, it is an upside down bowl of spaghetti, just trying to get schedules worked out and things uh, coming together. So. We really appreciate that very much. Thank you, Pastor and other Calvary staff, for letting us use the building tonight and for making this possible. So let's thank them tonight for their hospitality. You know, I really enjoy these programs because I always get to see something that surprises me about your young people. I, just when I think I have seen all of their talent showcased or I know pretty much everything about them, Someone like Griffin steps up to the piano. I had no idea that he could play the piano. And then my kids today said, yeah, Griffin's going to play the piano. And I'm like, Griffin plays the piano? What does that kid not do? Is there, nothing, is there anything he doesn't do? So tonight he plays the piano. So that was wonderful. And then I watch uh, the young people perform, and I think, man, they are just so talented. So it's a privilege. It really is a privilege to lead Maranatha Baptist Academy. So I want to say, say thank you from the bottom of my heart for the privilege of leading uh, this school. Your young people, your families here, you've entrusted us with the privilege of educating your young people and we take that very seriously, and it's an honor really to serve you at Maranatha Baptist Academy. I do want to recognize a couple of our folks, our staff members, who are more or less uh, the, the uh, spearheads on our fine arts program. And so I'm going to recognize those four folks tonight. Ms. Frisky is our choir director. Go ahead and stand there, Ms. Frisky. Uh, Mr. Bonima is our band director. Uh, Mrs. Mays. Mrs. Mays is our speech director. And then Mr. Howard is our hand chimes, our hand tones director, so there he is, right here. So thank you all very much for your hard work and for putting this program together tonight. The last time we were in this building together as a school, we were here at graduation. It's hard to believe that that was about, let's see, this is December, so that was May, so six months ago or so. And uh, we were celebrating the retirement of Mrs. Kathy Lawson, who has joined us this evening. So, Mrs. Lawson, where are you? She is our recent retiree. Congratulations, Mrs. Lawson. How's retirement going? Good. Good. No, no regrets, right? No re she's shaking her head vigorously. No. So, we're glad to see her with us this evening uh, here back in our, in our school building, uh, our school uh, program tonight. I just want to mention a couple things to you tonight as we get ready to take an offering. We mentioned earlier, as, as we prepare for this program, that we do like to take an offering to give you an opportunity to give back to Christian education. I, uh, thinking through uh, the years that I have been involved in uh, the ministry of school administration, um, my favorite part of that 
that job title school administrator is not the administrator portion. I love the school portion of being a school administrator. I love uh, being around school. I love the routine. I love having two weeks off at Christmas and three months off in the summer and a spring break and a Thanksgiving break. What's there not to love about education, right? I love the school aspect of being a school leader. But I love working with your young people. Someone asked me, one of the students asked me a few weeks ago, why do you want to be a school principal? And I said, I ask myself that every morning when I wake up and roll out of the coverage to come to school. And I love being a school principal. And uh, it's one of the, the privileges of my life to just be around your young people each day. But as I think across the years of my own schooling in Christian education, I can't help but think about the many people who contributed to, to the facilities and the textbooks and the band instruments and the wonderful programs that I enjoyed as a high, as an elementary student, high school student, a college student, that was not all paid by me when I paid tuition. It was paid by people who had a vision for Christian education, who saw the need for there to be facilities and instruments and books and all those wonderful things that have to be part of school. And so Christian education is a wonderful, wonderful blessing, but it's provided for by Christian people who see the need for Christian education to go on. And that's you and me. Uh, we are here at this place to celebrate uh, Christmas, and we're celebrating Christian education, the work that God has done in the lives of your young people. And I'm just going to ask you tonight to think about giving generously to our school, not for, not for any of us to profit from it, but for our students now and future students to profit uh, from the Ministry of Christian Education. I mentioned earlier that we would like this year to invest those funds uh, in a uh, trophy case. Let me see if I can get some PowerPoint going here. I have a picture or two for you. We'd like to update uh, some of our facilities at the Academy. Now, you're aware that this summer uh, we updated the hallways and repainted, and we have all new tile throughout the school, so it's really, really beautiful. And uh, we'd like to kind of go ahead and update our trophy case. So I'll show you a couple of uh, pictures here. We'd like to invest in something like this that will help us just to showcase some of the uh, trophies for fine arts and for athletics and the plaques and the ribs and things like that that the school has earned over the years. I was teasing with the students today. We have a, an existing trophy case in our school, and it is mounted on the wall. It's a half uh, case. And every time Mrs. Mays closes her classroom door, I'm pretty sure that trophy case is about to come off the wall because it rattles and shakes, and it kind of dips in the center. And I think that's because of the incredible weight and the trophies and all the hardware that our school has earned over the years. But we would like to replace that just to modernize the facility there, and so we would ask for your help for that tonight. And uh, so there's a couple examples there of trophy cases that we could possibly invest in. I did find this one as well. And, uh, <laughs> My only question is, who am I going to get to put on that suit of armor every day and stand in the corner? I have a couple of guys in mind that would probably be up to the task as long as it gets them out of English or math or science or whatever. So uh, that would be something that would be fun to do. But we'll, we'll look at some options there and ask for your help in that in our offering uh, tonight. I want to uh, mention something else to you as well. And uh, there's a way for you to give online if you would like to do that. That's on our school website. We have a secure online portal for you to give. And those donations are tracked. You'll receive a tax uh, deductible receipt for that gift. It's found on our school website. There's a Give Now tab. And then it'll direct you to an online portal. And the thing you need to know there is just go down to the bottom where it has the uh, options for you to designate that and just select Academy Designated. And that gift will come right to us. And so any time of year, the Lord lays it on your heart to be a help to our ministry. Uh, that's a great place where you can do so. So you can do that tonight. We're obviously going to take an offering this evening so you can give physically, but if you're ever inclined to give electronically, there's a way for you to do that as well. So we'd like to just remind you of that. Let me mention something else to you today that has been a burden of my heart this week. I know in the family, the families here, the hearts of, of folks who are here in our ministry, and that you're aware this last week there's a family in Watertown that suffered a trial by fire, literally. And that family went through, is still going through a, a, an incredible ordeal. And uh, we just want to be a blessing to that family. Uh, I don't know them personally, but I know that it's Christmas time, and I know that they're going through a hard time, and I think that we could be a blessing to them. And so it's our burden that we uh, give a gift to this family here in Watertown, and so tonight we decide that 20% of tonight's offering is going to go to this family here in Watertown. Pastor Loggins has a connection with them. He has a relationship there with them, so we're going to ask him to take care of that and get that to them. But anything you give tonight, 20% of that offering is going to go to this family here in Watertown just to be a blessing to them. We'll write them a letter. We'll have our students sign it and just tell them that we're praying for them and thinking about them at this time. So I want to encourage you to give them that way as well. And the last thing I'll mention is we have a friend of our school who has offered to match tonight's offering up to $500. So every dollar you give turns into two. And so if you can dig deep tonight, I know it's the Christmas season. I know that you are being 
um, ask for money right and left. I know there's gifts to buy and there's all sorts of expenses on your mind this time of year. But if you can do that tonight to be a help to our school, we would certainly appreciate that. And Lord, I think we'll bless those gifts, especially as we want to be a help to some others here in our community. The last thing I'll mention to you is this, that we have begun sales for Cheaper by the Dozen. It's our, spring, our uh, winter play coming up here in January. And that production is well underway. Rehearsals have been going on for over a month, and it's coming together very well. January 19th, 20th, and 21st uh, next year, 2023. And so if you haven't gotten tickets for that, I want to remind you how to do so. You can actually do so right here tonight. Now, if you don't know what that little black thing is in the corner, just ask your kids. Okay? That's a fancy uh, way to go online. It's a QR code. And there beside it, we have a link as well that you can follow there to reserve your tickets online. You pay for those at the school office. You can contact the school office to make payment there. But you can jump on there tonight, reserve your tickets, and be ready to go for the, uh, the winter play here in just about a month. And so we're looking forward to a great production of Cheaper by the Dozen. By the way, Cheaper by the Dozen was the very first play that Maranatha Baptist Academy performed. Uh, to the best of our recollection and, and uh, history, we can find it's about 49, 50 years ago that it was first performed. Mrs. Lawson, is that right? Do I have that right? I don't know if you were there for that or not, uh, but um, let's move on because uh, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> but uh, that play is coming up, and I know it'll be a blessing to you, and look forward to uh, enjoying that production with you here uh, next month. I'm going to ask the young men to come as we prepare for the offering this evening, and uh, as we do so, we'll ask the Lord's blessing on it. And we'll uh, have another number here by the hand chimes. And then the band will play, and we will be dismissed for the evening. There'll be no closing remarks tonight. We'll just wrap things up after the band plays. You will be dismissed. Thank you again for joining us this evening. And we hope that your Christmas season is a blessed time with your family, with your friends, praising God for his goodness, and enjoying the wonderful season that he's given to us to celebrate the gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let's pray and we'll ask the Lord's blessing on the offering tonight. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your wonderful love for us that you sent through Jesus Christ. We don't... Um, we don't uh, deny that we are sinful men and women. We need your help. We need salvation. And you provided that for us through the person of Jesus Christ. Thank you that he came to this earth. He was born as a, a baby and lived a perfect life, an innocent life, and then shed his innocent blood for the remission of our sins. And so, Father, we do give you thanks tonight. And here on earth, we, uh, as we wait your coming, we ask that you'd help us to be faithful let us be men and women who are invested fully in Christian education for the lives and the hearts and the minds of these young people. It's such a privilege to be part of this ministry. Thank you, Father, that we have an opportunity to contribute, to be part of the lasting legacy of Christian education here in this place. So take this offering now, bless it and use it. May it meet the needs of those that it's intended to, to help and to encourage. We think of this family here in Watertown that we want to be encouragement to. Lord, be the God of comfort to them. Bring people closer to you because of this situation that's a hardship, it's a tragedy. But may you be raised up and glorified in every situation. Bless this offering now. Bless, bless the remainder of our program and then the evening to follow. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you as you give. Thank you so much.
for coming. You are dismissed.